Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates and I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. I'm really happy to be here today. We're going to be working on cotton and cuddle today. So we're going to be combining the two substrates. For those of you who are quilters and have been interested in backing your quilts with cuddle, I'm going to show you some tips today on how to do that. So for our project today, we're just working with a little quilt block that I made. This is just an extra quilt block. And um, this was my practice run. I'm using the Cassandra fabric collection from Robert Kaufman Fabrics with their Cassandra's favorite quilt pattern. It's a downloadable pattern that I got. And then I use this one to just do a little practice run. So I've got my quilt block. I have my uh, Quilter's Dream Poly uh, batting. And then I have a cuddle back. I also have my 505 spray. Then I've got my stretch needles from Schmetz, my stiletto. Paracotton Poly from Quilters Select. It's a really nice thin polyester thread. This is my Fermori scissors. I've got my Ulfa cutter uh, for when I'm doing the Lux cuddles, my rotary cutter for when I'm doing the regular cuddles, and my favorite flower head pins. Okay, so today we're going to be putting this block together, and I'm going to show you some tips on how to do that. Uh, and it's really actually super duper easy. So, um, one of the things that I want to make sure that you know is that using Cuddle Minky is going to be different than using Minky that you found elsewhere. So make sure that you're using the Cuddle brand. Um, it works much better and um, has some uh, things about it that make it better for working with um, for a quilt back. One of them is it's got a really nice pile to it, so it's um, it's going to be really beautiful. But it also only has a two-way stretch. So using um, something that has a four-way stretch will be harder, um, whether you're doing it on your machine or a long arm, which you can do both. Today we're going to show I'm going to show you how to do it on a domestic but it's absolutely doable on a long arm, and I'll show you an example of that later. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm going to first take my tools away, and then I'm gonna put these three layers together. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna adhere these three together so that they um, will work as one piece and I can quilt them. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this piece of fabric down. This is just a scrap piece of fabric that I had some cotton and I'm going to use that as my um, like overspray. So you want to make sure that you have a place that you can spray and not get it uh, all over the place. So don't do it just directly on your board. I think I've talked before about how much I like the 505 spray and how well it works. Um, and it washes off with water which is great but you still don't want to get it all over everything if you don't have to. Okay so what I like to do is I sandwich these all three together. Because these are so small, this is really easy for me to do, and I can just fold this guy back um, halfway, and I'm going to spray the back of it, okay? Get that all nice and flat so you guys can see it. Okay, so I'm going to spray the back of this with my spray, okay. and then I'm going to push this out, and I'm going to get my middle nice and flat, and I'm just going to sort of work it out so that it's flat and stuck to the batting. So that's just me manipulating the fabric a little bit. Make sure that it's, it's going to be flat on there. Okay, that's really important. Okay, so I've got that, and then I'm just going to flip this around. Ta-da! Okay, and I'm going to pull this side back. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Okay, and I'm getting this so that wherever, if I get overspray on any of this, it doesn't matter. So I want to pull that back just the tiniest bit so that I don't get any on the front. Okay. And you can see I don't use a lot of spray. Um, sometimes people want to really overspray it, and it's it's not going to help. Um, all it does is make it messier. And if you really overspray, it'll soak through your fabric, and that's not what you want at all. Okay, so I'm just going to get that nice and taut. Okay, so now it's stuck. These two are working as one piece, and so now I'm going to put the cuddle on there. Okay, so I'm just going to turn it over, and I'm going to do the same thing and try to get those lined up. So if you were working with a large quilt, obviously you would do this a little bit differently, um, but not much. Um, you'd just be having to work with it slower in one like row at a time. Um, if you have a way of working with it because you've done bigger quilts with it, I'd love to hear your techniques. Um, so leave me a comment and let me know what you do. So I'm going to push this up. Okay, I've got that sprayed. I'm just going to put this out nice and flat. Okay, so then like always with the 505 spray, I just make sure and pat it. I'm going to turn this around and do it from the other side. OK, 
Okay, and I'm doing the same thing. Make sure I'm covering everything. Make sure I'm not gonna overspray the front. If I should overspray it, it's totally washable, but I try to avoid it if I can. Okay, so I've got that out nice and flat. All right, and you can see I made the back just a little bit bigger than the front. Okay, so now I've got these all stuck together. If I were doing, oh, that's something on my quilt. Um, if I were doing a uh, larger quilt, I would put pins in this. I'm just gonna put, or some like safety pins. I'm just gonna put some of my clover pins in here. Um, I would use the safety pins just to protect myself because you're gonna you know, stab yourself a little bit doing this probably <laughs> with the, the regular pins, okay? All right, so I'm gonna do this. Once I've got this set up, I can totally just quilt this like normal. So I would take this to my machine and I would quilt it, okay? I'm gonna show you just a little bit of that um, because it's really the same thing as you would do on any other, but I'll show you how well it works. Okay, come on over here. All right, so I've got my machine set up and um, I'm at a three and a half stitch length. I've got my walking foot on there and I'm just using a straight stitch. So I'm just gonna do a little stitch in the ditch here, um, just inside of there and show you how it works. Okay. I'm just gonna use my walking foot, stitch right along. So if you have those, you know, the fun little gloves that you can use, they'll totally work for this too. Okay, switch this. And I'm just gonna do this little square and show you what I'm doing, um, just so you can see it. And then I have a better example and I'll talk to you more about what else you can do with it. One more. And you can see I'm just letting the side of my foot there ride next to the, next to the seam. So it's not exactly a stitch in the ditch, it's more like an echo quilting, but I just wanna show you how well it works. So you can see it's not any harder than regular quilting. Um, and I like to do things where I just follow the lines because I'm um, I'm a beginning quilter. So I can, I can make the quilt tops, but the quilting part is not always my thing. Okay, so I'm gonna cut my thread. All right, and we can go back over here. All right, so I'm gonna go back over here. You can see uh, this top part and how it's quilted, right? Looks really nice. So on the back, you can see, so this is the, it'll leave little lines. You can see I can just rub them out from the uh, feed dogs that are going through here. And they will just totally rub right out. And it leaves a beautiful design on there. So let me show you the other one that I did that's um, the whole pattern of that. Well, not the whole pattern, I did four. Uh, okay, so this one I put the binding on part of it. I'm gonna talk you through this. Okay, so here's the quilt that I did. I did four blocks of it and I quilted it all with the cuddle on the back. So this is our cuddle three in tomato. Um, and I used my crescendo, my baby lock crescendo on this to quilt it, which turned out really beautiful. And you can see that it just pops up these designs so nicely, uh, which I really like. And so there's a couple little threads I have to come back and clip. It was really easy to do. I just followed the design that was on here and then I bound it. So one of the things that's different with um, working between cotton and cuddle quilts is that in the cuddle quilts, we give you a half inch seam allowance for all of our quilts. And with a cotton quilt, you always use a quarter inch um, seam allowance. So we sort of have to adjust for that on the binding. So what I do is I just cut it off a little bit bigger. So once I've done the quilting here, you can see I did all the quilting, get my binding out of the way here, um, and then I just cut it a quarter inch larger than the um, than I normally would. So normally I would just trim, I would quilt it and then trim right along this edge and then I would have my quarter inch seam allowance. But because I want to use a half inch seam allowance, I've added a quarter inch to all my sides. Okay, and that's just with the backing. So then when I sew my binding on, which if you missed it, we talked about binding last week, so go back and watch that one. Um, super good information in there. And we did, I did used a lot of that, those tips in this one for here. Okay, so I have sewn this on. I used my half inch seam allowance, okay? And this is our frost, and I used this. So it's a half inch, as I did, you can see it all the way across here. Then I'm just gonna turn this, pull it over, 
and then you're just going to line it up to this stitching line. So this line right here is what we're going to pull that up to. Okay, so that's what I've done here. So here's my stitching line, and then I pulled my fabric so it comes just past that, and then I zigzagged this down. So if I show you, maybe you can see some of those zigzags, but you'll see it really just, it flops right down. So after I'm done, I come back over it. You can see there are places like this where it sticks in, and I'm just gonna come back up and flip it um, and pull that out with my stiletto to make that all really nice. Because um, there are definitely areas that it'll look uh, worse than those. So here's a spot that I haven't touched yet. And this one, it's got down all the fibers get stuck in there. So I'm just gonna come back with my stiletto and I'm gonna come over that and I'm just gonna flip them up. Okay, I'm gonna pull it up, make it fluffy, okay? and then it looks really nice on this side. So I can do the same thing on the back because you'll notice on the back it does that and it'll hold it down and I will do the same thing and I can just come back over this and fluff this up. Um, one of the things too is that once you wash this, all of these come back up out of the stitches and looks really nice, okay? All right, so that's how we did that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so it's just folded over, stitched down, just like I showed in the last video. Okay, but I just want to show you how pretty that is. All right, it's really beautiful. So you can use this, um, the way that it's so pretty, you can totally use this in other ways. One of the things that I really love to do is using cuddle on both sides. Okay, and that's a whole different look. And you can do that for a large blanket. And especially if you have a long arm or you have a favorite long armor, um, like I do, then you can send them the cuddle, use the cuddle and um, the batting inside, cuddle on both sides and quilt it up. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is one that I did, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this is one that I did just on my, um, the baby lock, and I stitched it, and then I was stitching it the other way, and I wanted to leave it so that you could see it. So this one I used a, um, a fluffier one in there, so this is actually like a warm and natural that I use that gives it a little bit more fluff. Um, it really is your choice. We use the um, Quilter's Dream Poly on a lot of projects because it's really thin, and so it's easiest to quilt with, especially if you're using thicker fabrics. So this one I just did the line, and then I did one next to it, and then I measured. Um, one of the things that I love, so if you're a quilter and you have ever used a hair marker, um, which is a great tool for marking black spot on there um, for marking your fabrics when you're going to do the quilting. Um, I use this on my cuddle too. So I'm going to line this up so that I want it on my three inch mark and I'm going to line it up with my lines that I did before. And I'm just going to run this on here. If you use this on cuddle, sometimes it's hard to see, or on cotton, sometimes it's hard to see, but on the cuddle you can see it really well. So you can see this line and I can easily take it over to my machine, follow that line and stitch it up. Um, and it works out really, really well. So you can see this is beautiful from both sides. Really nice. Okay. So that's one of my favorites. Another thing that you can do is you can use Lux cuddles on the back. So this one I just did a little meandering little quilty thing on the front here, um, totally random, and quilted this up with just cotton on this side. This is Kona cotton from Kaufman. And this one I used a, the cotton and I also used the poly. Okay, so I used those two. I stuck these two together and then I basted them to these fabrics on either side. Okay, this is a really nice, this is one of our uh, Lux Cuddle Hides and it has this really pretty backing that sort of pops through. Okay, so what you can see when we've done it with the longer, so you can absolutely do it, but what happens is that these get stuck down there um, pretty well. And so you just kind of have to come back over it and pull these guys up, which you can see is not really too time consuming. Um, I like doing this while I'm, you know, watching my favorite movie or something, pulling these all up out of there. And it will give it, it almost hides the stitching where you can't really see it once it's pulled up out of there, but it will quilt it and make the back of your quilt the softest, yummiest thing ever. So that's the thing that I love about it is honestly, if you give somebody a quilt that you have made with this on the back of it, they will never again put it in the closet. <laughs> they will just keep it with them on the couch forever and always. Okay, so you can see how easy that is. It just pulls it right up, hides all of your stitching and is still super duper soft which is great, okay? The only thing that we've noticed that can happen sometimes is sometimes, and let me see, I had one spot that did it on here, that the fibers will come up through. And see, now it's, oh, there they are. So right here, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a couple little fibers that came up through. If I really careful, I can come back over here, 
I can make sure that this gets pulled up and out of there. Okay, and they can sometimes disappear. We'll see if it did. Yep, pulled it right out. Okay. So that's the easy way to take care of that. The other thing you can do when you're long arming it, I know that some people do, is that they'll long arm it from this side. So if you're doing an all over design, a computerized design, that's a great way of doing it. It's just using this on the top. Okay, so uh, there you go. Super duper easy. So that's with the Lux Cuddle quilted on this side. You can't even see it on this side, which is wonderful. Uh, and then I wanted to show you this one. So this is one hoping you can see the design in there. This is one that I had done uh, with my long armor and she had not quilted with cuddle before and I asked her if I send you a little quilt will you do it and she did. So this is just a little drunkard's path. Let's see if I can turn it. This is a little drunkard's path. This is art gallery fabric um, that I had made a drunkard's path with and then I had her quilt it with the cuddle on the back. Okay, makes these beautiful little loop-de-loops, which is just gorgeous, and then I bound it with the Lux Cuddle. Um, so you can do either one. So you can do these on your machine at home. You can totally um, use your, your rulers and all that sort of stuff, quilt with it. It's beautiful, or send it to the Long Armor. Um, we have download pa or downloadable tip sheets that you can get from our website. So if you go to shannonfabrics.com, we'll probably put it in the comments later. Um, so you can have those. And there'll be some tip sheets on working with the cuddle and cotton, and also with long arming cuddle. It's a great way to combine your two loves of cotton quilt making and the cuddle um, softness. So if you put the two together, they make quilts that are just the best thing ever. And people love them. Um, so I really recommend you giving it a try super duper easy um, so if you have any questions let me know in the comments and I'll I'll, uh, I'll answer your back I hope I answered your questions as we went but if there's more let me know um, next week we'll be back again we're gonna be doing a little pillow using um, your scraps so we have a specific uh, fabric that we're going to be using next time that's actually like a little patch fabric that's going to be fun but if you've got a bunch of scraps in your room right now that you've been doing these different projects with the cuddle fabrics and you have them this is a great project for that and you can use we're going to use 16 of these little squares and put together the cutest little pillow so super duper easy a great project again for beginners and for children so if you're looking for something um, that's not too scary this will be one of them um, I'm looking forward to seeing you then thank you so much for coming bye bye And thank you to our vendor partners for all of the products that they make that make sewing with Cuddle and Embrace easy.